Well, that's Jazzy. So like I said, this could be the last Amec video, so I just wanted to get a few things out. There's reasons for it. I just don't know yet. I don't know what I plan on doing. But I won't get into it now. But anyway, when I started the channel, I didn't really go into any detail about myself or anything stuff like that. So I'll just do that. Basically skim over some of the things. You know, I did have a smart ass on there saying that I'm angry or whatever and all that. I was like, well, maybe you got to just shut your damn mouth and then maybe get to know somebody first before you run your mouth. You know, there's reasons why I am the way I am. And yes, I cuss a lot, but that's just how I talk, so I don't really care what somebody else has to say. Anyway, family-wise, you know, we, we weren't, we were never one of these, these groups that you see today, these families that loved each other and was hugging on each other and saying, I love you, and everyone going to vacations and doing all this, and we didn't do all that crap. There was no hugging, there was none of that nonsense. My brother and I hated each other, I think, literally from birth. We, we just, I don't even talk to him today. I don't, I don't think I've talked to him in several years. I mean, maybe one a word or two, random if we see each other, but that's it. My parents, of course, drank constantly when, when we were kids. I mean, this was not not a random event. This was constantly fighting, cops getting called, people getting hurt, getting black eyes and bleeding, and me getting, I eventually got involved in it and was fighting back and all this nonsense, but when I was 18 is when my mom decided to tell me that my dad at the time was not really my dad. My stepdad, my real dad, I guess, jumped off the Ohio Bridge in the wintertime when it was frozen. <laughs> Which I even told her, I was like, well, probably because of you. My mother can sniff a beer, and she's ready for war. So I, I wouldn't be shocked. That had to have hurt like hell, but she was pregnant at the time, I guess, whenever this happened. Which I would assume that my stepdad probably knew that I wasn't his kid, but but regardless, it doesn't really matter. I mean, my stepdad's my dad. He, that's the only person that I grew up with. So I, I don't go, I'm not like all you women that want to seek out your family members and all that. I, I don't I could care less. I didn't know him. I didn't know his family and I'm not going to go. I, I don't want to meet any of them. I don't care. I mean, I think other people in the family knew because I was getting several, you know, just hints here and there, but I didn't give a shit. Plus I don't look like them. But I was a hell, hellion child, bad. I absolutely hated school. I was always in a fight with one specific redneck that couldn't seem to keep his damn hands off of people just because they were weaker than him. And I absolutely hated that son of a bitch like you can't even believe. Kicked out constantly because of that. Kicked out for skipping school. We'd skip school and go up to the food giant and steal cookie dough and eat it. Or st steal uh, helium balloons. You could actually make yourself pass. If you do that and then you hold somebody's neck, the rush was insane, but we were dumb back then. So we were, we were kids, but still. So when I got to high school, I got expelled for half a year. And at the time, I was pissed off about it too. I was like, well, I gotta try to find a way to get, because I thought I wasn't not gonna be able to graduate on time, but I did. But at the time I, I was pissed off. So me being dumb, I went up, to come up with this plan. I got the 22 out of the garage, sat down on the ground, put it on my leg. I had to shoot it several times to get it to where I could get myself, you know, to do it finally, because it kept freaking me out. And I shot myself in the leg. I was trying to get sympathy from the school board, basically, was what my plan was. Don't ask me why I come up with that plan. It was pretty damn dumb, but I even put the, the gun back up in the cabinet in the garage. Walked all the way up to the neighbor's house with blood pouring out my leg. And they called the ambulance. I had meat hanging out the back. It went all the way through and out the back hole. It was, it was disgusting. But it didn't help. I still got expelled, so. But whatever. And during that expelling time, oh my god. I can tell you right now, what the only thing that I remember from that is Days of Our Lives. My mother was playing Days of Our Lives every 
day of my life. This was when that Marlena chick was possessed by the devil, and that's all I can freaking remember from that time. It was awful. What a dumb show. I'm, oh, my God. Stefano. I can remember that stupid name, too. Then the next year, this is just me not being a redneck like everybody else in that town. I didn't know black powder blew up. I just thought it was a, you know, it would catch on fire. I poured a massive pile of black powder and lit it. God, was that awful. It blew up. The lighter blew up on my neck. Part of my lip was stuck up on my nose. I put my hands on my face. All my skin was falling off. I had second and third degree burns. I mean, it was horrible. My brother wouldn't even call the ambulance. He was fucking out of it. I had to call the ambulance myself. So then they flew me to the Pittsburgh Burn Center, which I was there for a month and a half, if I remember right. Didn't even get to look in the mirror for over a year, for the entire month. They made sure I didn't get to see it. They had cream on my face, just caked on. I'd wake up in the morning and roll over, and all that shit would be stuck to the pillow. It was disgusting. I don't know why I'm tired again. But that's why my face gets really shiny sometimes. It's just, I don't know, especially with the sun. But it healed perfectly fine. It will eventually get, you know, really, really, really glossy looking, but... It healed fine, and I mean, at the time, I had no facial hair. I looked absolutely freaking ignorant. But then we get to 12th grade. This one actually wasn't my fault. This was just, and I can I can still say to this day, I don't know who the kid was that actually made this story up. But you know, me and this kid that I always hung out with, we did have. He had bought books to make thermite, which is like some kind of shit that burns through anything. So I assume somebody found out about that. So the day of graduation, you know, we all planned on being fucked up when we went. But I had to go up to the school and pay for that Ben Herb book that I had broken in half because the teacher pissed me off. And I had to pay that or I wouldn't be able to get my diploma. When I pulled up, just cops swarmed my ass. I mean, literally threw me on a cop car, took me down to the station. They wouldn't tell me anything at first. When I got down there, you had the ATF down there. This is when it got really fucking intense. And then I had to be a smartass because they were actually pissing me off. They put me in a chair literally in the middle of the room. All the ATF agents swarming around me in a circle, spitting in my fucking face. But, you know, this is when I found out I supposedly was hiring snipers from Columbus to be in the bleachers. We were putting bombs in the greenhouse and in the high school. I just laughed. I'm like, I'm pretty badass here. I didn't know I was doing all this, but okay. And they were like, what are you doing up here at the school yelling? And I was like, I'll come up here to pay a fucking fine, for Christ's sakes. They got the other guy. He was on his way to get flowers, I think, for, the, for his girl he was walking with. But they wouldn't let me use the phone, so by the end of the night, I was fucking infuriated because they were pissing me off, not telling me anything, so I busted the phone off the wall so nobody could fucking use it. Then we went to... They took us to Cleveland, or to Pittsburgh... We were there for seven days. During that seven days, my mom and dad had hired a lawyer. That fat son of a bitch didn't even show up to the only hearing that I had. Absolutely pointless. And you would have seen this on the news if you would have went back to 1998 and looked at St. Mary's. I've got a whole folder of shit. Bomb suspects, Shingleton and Dotson. It was, it was, it was a big national story. Then when, they, when we got into the, to jail that day up in Pittsburgh, we were right there on the damn camera, or right on the TV when we walked in. It was like, oh my God. About seven days later, you know, the day before they let us out, they had graduation, they rescheduled it, and then the next day the kids supposedly recanted the story. So I don't know how much of that's true. But, you know, that just shows people can just make up something and get you put in jail. But it was interesting because there was a guy in there that I said in another video about this. This was a murderer that killed his wife with a hammer and the guy she was sleeping with. Nicest guy there, honestly. He was, which I think is bad that people, I think people see people that kill people as bad people, but sometimes I think they just need to sit down and talk to these people. He was the nicest dude you've ever even talked to. He was just, you could tell it hurt him and it hurt him bad because he probably trusted her and he, Probably put a lot of faith into her, and then she does it in his bed, in his own house. So, 
you know, I, I, I can't fault people that do things like that. I mean, yeah, I know you're not supposed to, but you shouldn't also do that to him. You know, I, women are not these saintly beings that don't deserve to be punished sometimes when they do things wrong. I mean, yeah, he probably shouldn't have killed her, but I can't say that I disagree with him. I just think people need to stop being so damn selfish all the time. If you're going to cheat, you know, at least they'll have a common decency to go do it at a hotel. Why would you bring him to the, to his bed in his own home? That's just sick to me. To me, I think it's disgusting. So, you know, to hell with her as far as I'm concerned. But, but he was a decent person. And I just think that these, some of these people just don't, they don't grow up properly and they don't really know how to react to things so they do it on instinct but i don't think they're bad people some are yes of course but but after that was over with they had a big meeting down at the marina and my mother wouldn't let me go to that either because i I was released the day before and this was about everything that went wrong about them charging us and jumping to conclusions on shit that didn't even happen and of course my mother wouldn't let me go because I was going to be a son of a bitch there, let me tell you. I was. I was ready for a war. But that's when I had to force myself to basically get out of town. So we, I moved up to the Columbus to go to DeVry, which I fucking hated. Me and my roommate Steve were drunk every day almost. Oh, my God. We even went to a bowling party, trashed off of fire water. It was, it was an interesting time, though, but... It also sucked because I was up there in Columbus, literally two hours away from home with no car. So I had to walk everywhere. And even when it was pouring in the rain, the snow and freezing, 30 minute plus walks every day, which is when I got jumped that one time. And that's when I said all that racist shit. But, you know, so be it. Those fuckers deserved it. You know, luckily they didn't freaking kill me that night. I liked it in Columbus until it got way too, too ghetto-ish. You know, there was too much shootings and shit going on. When you go to High Street in Columbus at nighttime, oh my God, what a, it's, it's awful. It really is. Supposedly, one of these girls that I was dating up there was pregnant. I don't buy that though, because she was a whore and that was part of the reason why we were having problems. She called me after she left and said that she, just to let you know, I had an abortion because I don't want anything from you. Like, whatever. It guarantee it wasn't mine. Then I moved back home. Ended up talking to a girl that, from school that used to come into the store and, it, and basically when I worked at McDonald's it was obsessed with me. And I mean obsessed with me. It's not even putting it lightly. She would come from New Matamoros and would sit there and stare at me for freaking half the shift. She'd even send, she had a hired a monkey to come in there and dance for a birthday thing once and but we eventually ended up getting married I think it was like seven years total we were together if only four of them we were married but then she this is this is when the first thing happens with me that that makes me kind of the way I am today you know I, I'll be honest that she did she got me good because I didn't even suspect a fucking thing nothing you know, now, she did come to me one day and ask me if I went to school with Corey. And I said, yes. And she said, well, one of, the, one of her friends she works with wants to know if he's a decent guy to date. And I was like, well, I, I mean, I, I can't tell you that part of it. Because he would always, basically, sat, him and Terry, would sit, Whitlock would sit behind me and cheat. And basically get all my stuff off my test constantly. Since freaking kindergarten. But, I mean, I never had an issue with him. But she was literally sitting there asking me for herself. That's what she was doing. You know, the day I found out, I guess her mother was trying to give me hints that I just didn't notice it. But, again, I trusted her, so I didn't think any of that shit was going on. She had told him that I was in Columbus dying of a brain tumor. She changed her name from Amanda to Michaela just to cheat. She would tell me at night she was taking our basset hound Oscar on a walk. She was taking him to his house. She, she got me pretty damn good, I, that's for sure. Because I, I literally was oblivious to all this. I was working, going to school. Didn't have a lot of time at all during the day, so, you know, I just, I, 
she wasn't working at all. She wasn't doing shit. But then one night, this was back, you know, when you still used regular phones, not cell phones. I picked the phone up and Corey was on the phone and he asked me how long I'd been dating Michaela. And I'm like, well, who the fuck's Michaela, first of all? Then after, then after he started talking, I, I, ca I caught on to what was going on here. I was like, well, her name's not fucking Michaela, for one. And she's married to me. We're not dating and I'm not dying. I'm not, none of that shit. But then he starts getting into this long, nonsense conversation that most people wouldn't, wouldn't you wouldn't believe. Sitting here saying that he, he's had his dick deep in my wife's cunt. And her parents knew about it. and But her mom took my keys that night, so I couldn't leave. Because I was... I started chugging Bacardi 151 that night. I was so fucking mad. But then the next day, she tried to talk to me, and I was like, no, nah, we're not discussing shit. I moved out the next day. Within, it took about two months. I was looking at houses to buy, because you know, I didn't give a shit after that. You know, when you do something like that to somebody, I mean, literally, you're lying, you're changing your name. You're... Only thing that I had that I had to fight for was Oscar and because they thought they were going to keep it. That dog was mine, and ain't fucking no way in hell. So that's the only thing that I fought for, and that's what I got. So I bought my house. I know the, the realtor lady was... I can't even think of her name now. Kim something. She was so sick of me. She would take me to houses, and I'd be like, uh, no, as soon as I'd walk up to it. A couple of them smelled like mothballs. I'm like, uh, no. I already told you I don't want to be any, around anybody. I cannot stand people. I don't want to be around people. I just luckily found this house. This was a, it was way over my budget though. My budget I think was only 113 is what I was approved for, and this was 119. But we ended up getting it down to 117, and I still got approved. So moved here, brought Oscar. That's when I got Connor, which was my first Akita. I love you'd have seen him. He was a pet smart man. Absolutely nobody was looking at him. And he was the most adorable dog that I've ever seen in my life. Actually, I probably got a picture of him. God, he was a beast. His paws were so freaking massive. Yeah, I got pictures of him. He was an adorable dog. Oh, here's both of them together. Oscar and Connor. But he was a cuter puppy. I've got plenty of them too. But this is what I came home to that day after buying a $2,500 new sectional for my new house. Yeah, little bastard. But I wasn't mad because it was my own fault. But it was funny as hell. And I didn't get it. They didn't replace it either. So I was just stuck with it. But I will. But I've been here since 2009. Now they're of course they're going to, they're trying to take my freaking house because of this other nonsense that's going on, which I'll go over in the next video. But it's just it's bullshit. You know, I, I've literally worked every single day of my life since I was 16, nonstop. Never needed assistance, never needed anything, and now these people are fucking me so hard right now. It's not even funny. It, it drives me absolutely nuts. You know, if you paid attention to anything with the unemployment bullshit that went on with me total bullshit it was just a jealous manager who got caught talking to my girlfriend and he had to come up away to get me fired at the same time I'd been waiting almost four or five months for this doctor's appointment which happened three days after I got fired and that's when I found out about this cold and shit and all that and which has been downhill ever since but thanks to that prick lying on the termination thing they put me as gross misconduct so I couldn't get unemployment until I returned to work for 30 days and I couldn't return to work for 30 days when your doctor has taken you off work for you know a long last time not only for that but this was when COVID was at its worst and I don't have a spleen I had my spleen removed from actually I forgot this one when I was discussing all the other shit um, I climbed a tree me and one of the that Jeremy kid it was like 14 feet. I guess I fell. There was a dead tree laying across the top of those two trees. I guess I passed out when I hit the ground the first time, but he said the tree fell on top of me. It ruptured my spleen, busted my, or ruptured my appendix, busted my spleen. 
or whatever, however you say that. He ran up the hill. This was way down in the woods. I mean, way down in the woods. He brought the ambulance down there to me, and they had to cut my stomach open and took my spleen out. So I can't fight off infections at all. That was part of the issue because I almost died once from pneumonia. Like, your spleen produces white blood cells, which helps you fight off infections. And we didn't know how COVID was going to affect me. And by the time that I even, you know, how everybody was literally finding out that they had COVID was so many days into it, with me not being able to fight off infections, we didn't know that, you know, that by the time I even knew that I had COVID, it would probably already, would have already killed me. So that's why she took me off even longer, which was over a year. And during that year, I couldn't work. They refused to pay me unemployment. I went through this long appeal process of the most un realistic bullshit you've ever seen in your life and I mean I'm not even kidding you they shot me down from every single program since the beginning of all this illegally so I appealed my unemployment because it was bullshit they literally said that I had been written up before never never once was written up in my entire history at that job so I just assumed that that piece of shit made up a fake one but whenever we got the paperwork Whenever they denied my unemployment, was there any write-up in there? No. All they had was a termination paper. And they even stated in there that I was previously written up. I was like, well, you obviously didn't care about it either because you didn't ask why. If I was wrote up, why the hell was it not in this paperwork? So I tried to get a copy of it. They said they would send it. Then they lied. Then they sent me an email saying that you have to get a lawyer to get it. So the day of the appeal hearing, I assumed that they would just bring it because, you know, that's kind of... The right thing to do since this is the only document that you're saying that I have had but they didn't no I mean I prepared for two months for that appeal hearing I had my case so perfect that I, there was no way I was gonna lose that judge was annoyed the moment he got on the phone the uh, manager or not manager super, my manager's boss Sean brought Mike to the hearing Mike was currently being investigated at the time because of you know, I had reported them to that 1-800 number. He wasn't supposed to be at this hearing. So both of my witnesses backed out because he was there, because they still worked at the building with Mike. So they didn't want to, you know, risk their job. I didn't get to use either one of my witnesses. I didn't get to show any of my paperwork that I faxed because he confused it with unemployment office's paperwork. It was over in like three minutes. Absolutely a joke. So I had to file another appeal. This is where it all went to hell. It was almost seven months later until I actually got the actual hearing because they lost it. Then they blamed it on me because they said I didn't send it. And then when I proved that I sent it, they still denied me because it was late. And then I had to fight it again. Seven months later, when I finally hired an attorney to go to help me with a three board member hearing, because I knew if I didn't have somebody there, they're just going to screw me again. They had, I had the hearing and then the son of a bitch just turned it around on me and made me have a late appeal hearing. I was like, I don't even know why we're doing this. This was, this was not why I was here. You guys know the late appeal was your fault. But anyway, we went through that stupid late appeal hearing, and yes, it got approved that, yes, that I was right. So the next hearing was a three board member hearing, but the, the three board member hearing went on without us. We weren't even allowed to be there. So you got to think, they're going to go by what they have already, which was nothing for me. My fax paperwork was not entered because they screwed up. My witnesses were not there. The write-up still wasn't there. I brought it up during the appeal hearing. Where is this write-up? And the judge smarted off to me. Well, if you thought it was that important, you could have subpoenaed it yourself. I'm like, I did try to get it. I didn't know I could subpoena it for this. I didn't think I'd have to. That's the only document that they're saying that they had on me. And they didn't produce it again. And nobody thinks that's weird. Not only that, they lied under oath making up fucking stories it was just it was ridiculous but because covid was going on they had used it to their advantage that i could, you basically would never step foot in a room with anybody not once did i ever ever be in the same room i had one conversation which was that appeal hearing that, they, uh, that i got denied and that's it only thing for two years that was over twenty five thousand dollars they stole from me but i filed an appeal again after this to the circuit court which again, months later, 
Then they said that they were waiting on the paperwork from the unemployment office before anything would get scheduled. They, it was April 14th, literally. It was supposed to be back to them by April 15th. And on April 14th, I had called. I'm like, uh, th tomorrow's the deadline. Have they not sent you anything? They're like, yeah, we just received it today, which I don't, I don't know if I even buy that bullshit. But in my letter, I described countless things that they have done wrong here as to why this, this case needs to be heard. Like half of the shit I just told you, which is I've not even had a, a, a chance in hell to do anything. I mean, you've, you've made these decisions. The three board member hearing happened, and my lawyer at the time thought we were having a, an in-person hearing because the paperwork did say that, you know, at the time of, of the hearing that is coming up, you could present a reason why evidence should be added which I did. I would think maybe the judge confusing your paperwork for something that's not, you know, technically your fault is about the best perfect reason as to why you shouldn't anyway. But no. You know how easy that discussion, that or whatever decision probably was for them? They had nothing on my side. They had just had their side, so I'm pretty sure that was pretty simple. It, it just it pisses me off to this day that that all happened like that. And then eventually... The circuit court denied even having the hearing. Pointless waste of time. It's just such bullshit. So, and during all that, I had to get a roommate, in which became two roommates because she, her friend was always here, who was a drug addict, fucking piece of shit. They stole my car keys one night. This is when I was going on with this cold and shit, and I was one of them nights I was bleeding horribly. And they they asked me before if they could use the vehicle just to drive up the road, which I let them one time. But this night, they decided to just steal my truck all the way to Clarksburg. I got a call at 2 a.m. in the morning from the FBI building asking me if I had loaned my truck out. I was like, no. I'm like, well, these two people were up here. They were drinking. Nobody has a driver's license. Underage. I was like, oh, my God. So I even explained to the cop that I was like, you know, I was explaining to him what was going on with my health. And I was like, and he actually felt bad for me, so he said he wasn't going to impound my truck. I just had to get up there and get my vehicle, which I, I did eventually. I had to go up with one of the girls' mother, which wasn't very pleasant. But eventually we kicked that girl. I kicked the one girl out. But she was getting paid by PUA, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, that I applied for, that my doctor had sent a letter for, and they denied me that as well. But they approved her. She's never worked five times in rehab. All she had to do was say she took care, she was taking care of somebody with COVID and that's it. $18,000 they paid her that went to meth and heroin. That's no joke because her boyfriend even overdosed on heroin and died the, the year following all this. So that $18,000, you know, that, that, that helped kill somebody right there. But you know, the $25,000 that I legally worked for, yeah. It fucked me. So I had someone living in my house that was getting paid by a program that I applied for with a legal doctor's note that 100% approved me, and I got denied. It's absolutely unreal how they pulled that. What they did with that one, they tied it to my unemployment. They said that you can't, you were fired for gross misconduct, so you can't apply for this one. But I even filed an appeal on that one. But then the unemployment office talked to me out basically said that I had to drop one of them. I couldn't have them both going on, so I had to drop the PUA one because the other one was worth more. But all this time, all these, you know, literally, they were paying that girl that was living in my house while I was struggling up, up a storm here. You wouldn't believe how horrible it was trying to pay bills, do anything, because I couldn't go to work because she had me off work for that reason. I'll start this, the next one will go further, but I know this video only, it stops me at 30 minutes for some stupid fucking reason, so I'll continue in a minute.